Welcome to another class on indices and logarithm. Now, in this class, I'll be talking about the laws of indices and laws of logarithm. Now, the first aspect, laws of indices. I'll be giving you some laws. The first law says, if you have any number raised by zero, is equals to one. Example, if you have five raised by zero, is equals to one. If you have seven raised by zero, is equals to one. If you have 1,000 raised by zero, is equals to one. So any number raised by zero is equals to one. Now, you have to be very patient because these indices and logarithm, they are basic to mathematics. Number two. If you have one raised to power, let's say x, is equals to one. That is, one raised to power anything is equals to one rather, is equals to one. One raised to power x is equals to one. One raised to power x is equals to one. Now, what are we talking about? If you have 1 raised to the power, let's say 5, it will still be equal to 1. If you have 1 raised to the power 90, it's still equal to 1. If you have 1 raised to the power, let's say 35, it's still equal to 1. So 1 raised to the power, any number, is equal to 1. Number 3. If you have a raised to the power x multiplied by a raised to the power y. A raised to the power x multiplied by a raised to the power y. Since this is multiplication, the law says this multiplication will not change into addition. You change it into addition when you are picking the same base. You observe that they have the same base here. So it will change to addition. So it will become a raised to the power x plus y. E.g., if you have, let's say, 5 is part 3, multiplied by 5 is part 2. So I can say that this one is equal to 5 is power 3 minus 2. If you check it very well, let's even use the calculator to prove. Now, if you press on your calculator, let me reset the calculator. If you press on your calculator, 5 is power 3, then multiply by 5 is power 2. Sorry, multiply by 5 raised to the power 2. What's the answer? You can observe that the left hand side is 3125, which must be the same thing with the right side. Sorry, this one is plus. I told you it should be, it should be plus, not minus. To be plus. So now be 5 raised to the power, let's say 3, then plus 2. Then you have it to be 3, 1, 2, 5 as well. Can you see that the left side? is equal to right side. Law 4 says, under indices, number 4 says, if you have a raised to power x divided by a raised to power y, then this becomes a raised to power x minus y. So the this one is that the division will change to minus if they have the same base. The same base. So you are going to pick a base, and it will be raised to power, the power of each, but the division will change to minus. So e.g., if you have 5 raised to power 3 divided by 5 raised to power 2, then this will become 5 raised to power 3 minus 2. So if you press it on the calculator, you have 5 raised to the power of 3, then divided by 5, 5 raised to the power of 2. The answer is 5. So this left side is equal to 5. Let us see if it will be equal to the right side. And the right side is 5 raised to the power 3 minus 2. The answer is also 5. So the left side is equal to what? Right side. Law number 5. Law number 5 says if you have a raised power x or raised power y. 
Now this one, it can become, I can have it to be a raised power y, raised power x. That is, I can exchange the power. Even at the same time, I can open it up. It can become a raised power x, y. It can also be a raised power y, x. The reason why is because the, the sign between them here is multiplication. For instance, example. If you have, if you have uh, 3 raised to the power of, let's say you have 3 raised to the power of 6, for instance, it can become 3 raised to the power, I can have it to be 2 times 3. You know 2 times 3 will give you what? Will give you 6. I can have it to be 3 raised to the power 2 into bracket 3. It can also be, it can, you know, if you open this back, it will still be 2 times 3, it will still be 6. 2 times 3 is still 6. I can still have it to be 3 raised to power 3 or raised to power 2. It's still 3 times 2, that's still what? That's still 6. So it's still the same thing. If you press all these on the calculator, it will give you the same value. Let's start. The first one, 3 raised to the power of 6 is 7 to 9. Can you see this one gave us 7 to 9? Let's press the second one. The second one, 3 raised to the power of 2 times 3. It is still 7 to 9. The third one, into the bracket of 3, raised to the power of 2, close the bracket, raised to the power of 3. It is still 7 to 9. The last one here, into the bracket of 3, raised to the power of 3, those bracket square, it is still 7 to 9. So, can you see, they all have the same word, the same value. That means the left side is equal to what? Right side. So, it can be equal. Number 6. You can have, another law that says, if you have a raised power minus x, a raised power minus x will be 1 over a raised power x. Now, I will have to Take this law with another law. Yes, I will have to take it with another law. But let me explain this first. E.g., if you have 5 raised power minus 2, the answer is 1 over 5 raised power 2. Take note. The value here will be the power of the words of the base number here. If you have 7 raised power minus 3, the answer will become 1 over 7 raised to the power what? Power 3. Yes. The same thing with number 7 here. If you have a raised to the power minus 1. That's why a raised to the power minus 1 will always be... Uh, it will be 1 over a. The reason is because this one is also here. This one is also here. But... You know that a raised power 1 will be what? Will be 1 according to this law. So that's it. So example, if you have 7 raised power minus 1, it is still what? 1 over 7. So raised power 1 here. 7 raised power 1 will still be 7. So that's why we have it to be 1 over 7. So it's still the same thing with what? With the losses. But anti raised power 1 will be what? Will be 1. So that's why. If you have 8 raised power minus 1, it is still 1 over 8 raised power 1. But... 8 raised power 1 will still be what? 8. That's why the law is stands like that. Number 8. Law 8. If you have a raised power 1 over x, a raised power 1 over x, whenever you have this law, my, make sure that, you know, this one and this one are not the same. This one is 1 all over everything. But this one, it is a raised power 1 over x. Now, if you want to construct this, you are going to square the base number with the denominator. That's why we have it to be like this. That's why it is x root of a. Now, compare it to this. If you have a raised power, let's say y over x. Now, it is denominator you are going to use to square it. So, it will now be x root of your base number. But it will now be raised to the power of the numerator here. And what's the numerator here? That's y. But because the numerator here is 1, that's why this one doesn't have anything here because a raised power 1 will still be what? A. Example. If you are given 
7 raised power 1 over 2. It will now be square root of 7. Because this square root is 2 itself. So that's why we don't need to put 2 here. Another one is if you have 9 raised power 1 over, let's say, 4. So this will now be 4 roots of 9. But this case now, if you have 6 raised power 2 over 3. So this answer will now be 3 roots of 6 raised power your what? Your numerator, which is what? Which is 2. And lastly, if you have 10 raised power, let's say 4 over 6. So the answer will now be 6 roots of 10 raised power. What is your numerator? That is what? 4. Now, these are some laws of indices. Now, if I should proceed with well, these indices, now that's law 10 now. Law 10. Now, if you have something like this, a raised to power x multiplied by, uh, let's say, b raised to power x. Now, if you observe this, is unlike the other one. You know, this one is of the same base, but the sign between them is multiplication. That is why we pick, that's why we pick the base alone. And the multiplication chain to what? To addition but this one they are of different base but they have multiplication but if you check very well this one has and they, they they have the same power so because they have the same power we still have it to be a b the raised power what the same power you just pick one power so that's the difference between the two so it is the multiplication the base will still multiply themselves then you have what you have raised to the power of what of the common power they have that's it for instance if you have 5 raised to the power 3, then multiply by, let's say, 4 raised to the power 3. It should be 5 times 4, all raised to the power 3. Let's prove this. You can prove the previous one as well on the calculator and see if it should be correct. 5 raised to the power 3, then multiply by 4 raised to the power 3. The answer is 8,000. Then let's see if it should be equal to the right side, which is into brackets, 5 times 4, all raised to the power 3. It is still 8,000. So that is the answer. Now, law 11. For the law 11, if you have something like this, like if you have into the bracket of a raised to power x, then multiply by, let's say y, and let's say y over x. You know that this thing would be a raised to power y. Yes, because if you observe it very well, x here will just cancel x here if you multiply. For instance, if you have 5 raised to the power 3, then multiply by 2 over 3. If you open this bracket, it becomes 3, 5 raised to the power 3, multiply by 2 over 3. So 3 cancel 3, so it is 5 raised to the power 2. So that's the answer. If you should press on the calculator, you observe that is what is the same. Because this should be into bracket 5 raised to the power, you have 3. The multiply by you have raised to the power of 2 over 3. The answer is 25. So you have this to be 25. Let us see the right side as well. You know that 5 raised to the power 2 will also be what? 25. That's 5 times 5. That's 25. As you can see, it's what is correct. Law 12. Now for the law 12. If you have anything raised to the power 1, you all know that is what is anything. If you have 5 raised to the power 1, is what? Is 5. 7 raised to the power 1, is still what? 7. 10 raised to the power 1, is still what? Is still 10. Law 13. Law 13, what of if you have something like, let's say, x over a raised to the power y. x over a raised to the power y. You know that this will become x multiplied by x multiplied by 1 over a raised to the power y. That's it. So, if finally we'll be having it to be x, then don't forget that 1 over a raised to the power y will be a raised to the power minus y, according to this law. According to this, 1 over a raised to the power x is a raised to the power minus x. So, therefore, 1 over a raised to the power y will be a raised to the power minus y. So multiply by this x. So if you have something like this, 
if you have 5 over 7 raised to the power 2. So the answer will be 5. Then multiply by, multiply by 7 raised to the power minus 2. So that's the answer. And if you press this on the calculator, you have 5 multiplied by 7 raised to the power minus 2. The answer is 5 over 49. But for the indices, this is where you are going to stop if you are using and to solve. But if you want to use a calculator, the calculator is very straightforward. You just press it straight. Now, at the comment section, let me have the answer to this. Now, let me know the final answer for if you have uh, 6 raised to power minus 4, 6 raised to power minus 4, then multiply by 6 raised to power minus 4, multiply by 7 over 2 raised to power 3. Let me have the answer to this at the comment section. Thank you very much. I remain inshallah the blessing. Popularly known as General David. Like, comment, and subscribe for our channel. The next class will be looking at the laws of logarithm. God bless you. Let me have the answer of this at the comment section. Thank you.